It may be surprising to learn that in the early years of Doctor Who, there was no consensus on the origin of the Doctor or his time machine. When Terry Nation came to write Section Dalek 3, eventually called The Chase, it was clear in his mind that the Doctor had built the TARDIS himself, and it seemed he was probably just an ordinary man from the future. Some of these clues actually survive into the broadcast version, but some were edited out. One particular lost piece of dialogue shone a spotlight on the Doctor's own people, a people who we discover were not necessarily aliens at all. Everything we were told was a lie. If you'd like to support our research, contribute ideas, and see clips and early videos, then check out the link in the description on how to join our Patreon. On the 16th of May 1963, notes were written on the approach to take for writing a new science fiction drama series featuring a main character who had amnesia. Because neither he nor his earthly friends know who he is, they give him the name Doctor Who. The outline states that he is actually on the run following a galactic war, and he stole an outdated timeship when he escaped his own galaxy in the year 5733, but he is unsure how to work the machine. This series treatment was revised a month later, when the elements about the galactic war and the escape from another galaxy were removed. It was decided that the timeship would still be from 5733, but no mention of Doctor Who being from another galaxy. When it finally came to write the pilot episode, the Doctor and Susan were said to be not of this race and not of this Earth, but creator Sidney Newman didn't like this cold alien characterization, and so their origins were made more vague in the version that made it to screen, and the Doctor just used the phrase, our own planet. This might still seem like a pretty cut and dried explanation as to their origins, but we are biased by the decades of continuity that came after it, which reinforced the apparently alien references in the dialogue. But things aren't actually that simple. Strange though it may seem now, in the early years of the show, the Doctor's backstory remained in flux, Doctor Who. including whether or not he was an alien or just a human from the future. Hmm. An unearthly child is written somewhat ambiguously because when the Doctor talks about what separates his people from Ian and Barbara, the differences are technological and chronological, as you'd expect with a man from the future, rather than biological and geographical, as you'd expect from a conversation with a totally alien being. My civilization. I tolerate this century, but I don't enjoy it. The Doctor says they are wanderers in the fourth dimension. They are exiles in time. And when Susan objects to their departure, the phrase she uses is I won't leave the 20th century. It's the time rather than the place that she's focused on. Most of the dialogue is written as if the Doctor and Susan are from a future Earth. And even if we do take the Doctor literally about his planet being a different place as well as a different century, he still never says he's an alien. His planet could be a human colony. This lack of clarity at the outset led to later writers treating the Doctor and Susan as relatively normal people, with probably terrestrial origins. For example, when it came to write Susan's departure, she says to David, I don't belong to this time. Again, with the emphasis on her being a person out of time rather than an alien, and she never feels the need to warn David that the future of their relationship could be affected by her being from an alien species, a line of dialogue from The Rescue is a rare early reminder that the Doctor may not be from Earth. The Doctor's from a different age, a different planet altogether. But when Terry Nation came to write his third Dalek serial, his story focused so much on journeying through time that Nation's original draft clarified a surprising amount about the TARDIS, plus a little about the Doctor himself for the first time in the show's history. However, these innovative features have largely been excised from Doctor Who lore. Information from the chase has either been retrospectively ignored to fit with how canon has changed, accidentally modified due to misunderstanding, or it was changed at the script editing stage so that some interesting dialogue didn't even make it to screen. 
A key term which Nation invented, and which was later misappropriated, was the time rotor, which he coins for a spinning dial on the console that indicated when the ship was in flight, and which slowed down as the ship began to land. Doctor, look, the time rotor. Doctor, it's slowing yes, down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that means we can land. Many years later, a misunderstanding in Doctor Who Weekly issue 15 resulted in this term being incorrectly applied to the central column. And this information then influenced the TV series itself, with the term cropping up in Meglos in 1980 and then in Terminus. But on neither of those occasions is it indisputable what the term applies to. The main source of the propagation of the error is undoubtedly the target novelizations, in which both Eric Sayward and Terence Dix clearly refer to the central column as the time rotor in both the Visitation and Arc of Infinity respectively. As a result, the error infiltrated the minds of a generation, leading to it resurfacing in the new series episode The Doctor's Wife where it's probably the clearest instance on screen of the use of this misattributed term. You'll need to install the time rotor. The next piece of lost lore that Terry Nation wrote in The Chase comes when the Doctor casually drops into conversation that he built the TARDIS himself. That's my time path detector. It's been in the ship ever since I constructed it. Nation clearly thought very little of this, and this is in no way a dramatic reveal. It simply fitted in with what the writer assumed about the time machine, and it aligns with the fact that Susan named their ship TARDIS. It's due to later continuity that it becomes increasingly hard to reconcile this information. Some folks will desperately cling to the notion that the Doctor is referring to the construction of the time path detector itself rather than the ship, but that would be like saying, this person has been alive ever since they were born, although that wouldn't be the most garbled thing the first Doctor ever said, so maybe that's fine. Yes, and if you'd had your shoes on, my boy, you could have lent her hers. Other options are that the Doctor used to work in the TARDIS construction yards, and therefore, coincidentally, he did build the TARDIS himself, or perhaps he's just lying to impress everyone. Susan coining the term TARDIS also becomes awkward without a similar forced explanation, Perhaps everyone is just lying about everything. So what about the lost piece of dialogue from The Chase, about the Doctor's own people? It's all connected to how Nation's original draft dealt with the introduction of the technological wonder which is shown in the first episode. At the start of the story, the Doctor is putting the finishing touches to a contraption with the snappy title of the Time Curve Visiscope. According to him, a simple device he thought Ian and Barbara would find amusing. The Doctor says, In my time, children made these things as a hobby, much in the same way as children in your day made crystal sets. It seems that it's written from the perspective of the Doctor being a man from a future Earth, talking down to Ian, who is a more primitive man from the past. Firstly, the Doctor refers to my time and not my planet, and the comparison he makes to what the children do in Ian's era seems to indicate that their civilizations are separated by time and not space. Secondly, when Ian mentions Einstein, the Doctor replies by quoting a scientist called Venderman, and the implication is that there are Earth scientists who come after Einstein who make more relevant discoveries to the matter in hand. Thirdly, Vicky, an Earth girl, also knows about Venderman's law and was taught it at school. She says that in her time, which was the 25th century, there was a hope of applying Venderman's law to make a machine like the Visiscope. Put all this together, and the scene reads as if the Doctor is from further in Earth's future than Vicky, and his civilization has indeed applied Venderman's principles to make these machines. In fact, his time is so advanced that children can knock them together for fun. Nation was not the first to interpret the Doctor as a human inventor. At the time he was writing The Chase, a comic had just been published called The Klepton Parasites. In this strip, two English children called John and Gillian meet their grandfather, Doctor Who, for the first time, and discover he's an inventor with a time machine shaped like a police box. This backstory is then repeated when the first Dalek movie went into production, starring Peter Cushing. 
it's no coincidence that the character of Doctor Who in that film was a human inventor who had built the TARDIS himself. We look back on this now as a radical departure from the TV version, but that's based on what we were told later. At the time, making him a human inventor was the clarification or simplification of an ambiguous issue. So if the chase draft script was emphasising the Doctor being a human inventor, how quickly did an alternative backstory start to emerge? Funnily enough, the story which immediately followed, called The Time Meddler, also addresses the origins of both the Doctor and the TARDIS, but not quite as drastically as people tend to think. Although it introduces another individual who time travels just like the Doctor, the character of the Monk, if based solely on his first appearance, is quite clearly from a future Earth, just like the Doctor might have been. The first thing to note is that all of the monk's collection of treasures is Earth-based. His travels into the past are all into Earth history, to meet Leonardo da Vinci and to build Stonehenge. He has a get-rich-quick scheme based on a London bank. He says his goal is to prevent war in Europe by having a better English king. The monk wants to make history happen faster and improve life, to bring inventions forward. But he speaks of Earth history in the same way that you or I would. It's clearly his own world's history rather than that of an alien culture. There's no suggestion that the monk goes to other planets to do this same thing. He just wants to improve Earth. The precise issue of where he and the Doctor originate is carefully sidestepped with the dialogue simply saying that the Doctor and the Monk are from the same place. And interestingly, the Doctor says that his time is 50 years earlier than the Monk's. The only significant contradiction to the chase is that the TARDIS is no longer unique. The dialogue in the Time Meddler makes it quite clear that wherever the Doctor and the Monk come from, time machines like this are mass-produced, with different versions and optional extras depending on the model. During Season 3, there is dialogue which supports both human and alien origin stories. For example, in the Dalek's master plan, Mavic Chen claims that the Doctor's Earth appearance is a disguise, and when discussing the group who stole their Terranium core, the scene goes like this. At least that absurd story that it was my people from Trances who stole the Terranium has been discredited. Yes! They were from Earth, I believe! Only two of them, and they are under the influence of some creature from another galaxy. It is worth remembering that Mavic Chen can't actually know where the Doctor is from, and he is keen to deflect any blame away from Earth. And also of note is the fact that the term galaxy is thrown around in a very improbable fashion throughout Dalek's master plan, which is something I'll be addressing in an upcoming video. Perhaps most significantly, the Doctor's resistance to the effects of the Time Destructor at the climax of the story are probably the strongest indication up to this point that he is physiologically special somehow. And then in the following story, The Massacre, he says, Perhaps I should go home. Back to my own friends. But I can't. But then a few stories later, in The Savages, the Doctor seems quite clear as to what kind of a being he is. There are men, human beings, like you and me. And on the subject of special physiology, it might seem obvious that the Doctor's ability to regenerate immediately singles him out as an alien, but in fact when he first explains the process in Power of the Daleks, he says that his renewal is part of the TARDIS. And this point is expanded upon in Evil of the Daleks, the Daleks want to extract the human factor from a subject's brain, and the Doctor offers himself. The Daleks won't allow it, because they say, You have travelled too much through time. You are more than human. So it seems as if the TARDIS itself, and the Doctor's movement through time, may be responsible for changing his otherwise human body, to make it resistant to the effects of the normal passage of time. In The Wheel in Space, when the Doctor is given a medical examination, there's clearly nothing to arouse any interest, indicating a typical human body. It wouldn't be until six years after the show had begun that the Doctor's own species was finally given a name of sorts. 
we were introduced to the term Time Lord in the War Games, and the foundations were laid for the mythology that we now recognise. This was added to quickly by the story that followed it, Spearhead from Space, which introduced the idea that the Doctor was physiologically different to human beings, including having two hearts and different blood. You mean not human blood? And it was in this story that the Doctor first rejected the word human in reference to himself, something he'd never done before. Well, then I'm not human. And so from this point onwards, the Doctor was most definitely 100% alien. I'm half human on my mother's side.